when you think about self, when you wrote about the, the beautiful discourse that you wrote about self-image, did you consider your own self-image at all when you were writing? Oh, how do we know about the world? How do we know about any human being? We know it through ourself. Mm-hmm. So the person who examines himself to the utmost degree is the person who knows all human beings. So can you give me a contrast between what Kapil Gupta's self-image was 10 years ago and perhaps what it is now? Well, I don't think it's a matter of uh, comparing self-images. I think it's much more a, what matures over time is seriousness and sincerity. And as we grow older, we begin to see the the folly of things, depending upon how one is wired. Uh, we begin to see the foolishness and the silliness of of the things that happen in life, and um, you know, moving through life and all the events that happen in life and how we think about things. And so as we begin to look into those things and see the the foolishness of it and to see the holes and the falsehoods of them, then we begin to, or at least I began to examine the nature of the self. So it wasn't about me having a better self. It was examining into the nature of what a human being really is and what are the source of all problems. Um, so it, it's, it's much more a movement away from self and in, in the direction of, you know, this is going to come out the wrong way, but selflessness, but it has nothing to do with what you believe to be selflessness because there's nothing but self in selflessness in the, in the, in the traditional meaning of selflessness. And are you, are you at a point now where there is no self image? You know, it, it's really, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fair question. But I think that for me, even to answer it would be to fall for a trap, because if I was it to say, a trap. <laughs> no, 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 it isn't. You, you aren't posing it as a trap, but it is a trap for me to walk into it. Because if I say, yes, I have no self, you know, that is a contradiction in terms. So let us just be sincere and honest and leave it at. I am devoted to examining the falsehoods of the self and to see the outer boundaries of those falsehoods in order to discover truth. And then when, when that happens, is that when the dependency on others and the dependency on your team and society and all just doesn't, you don't give a damn about it anymore? I think, I think, I think when you begin to see through things, and you begin to see around corners and you begin to see the falsehood in things that you used to believe were true, um, then the things that you see as false automatically begin to fall away. There is no added step of making them fall away. So there is no real detachment. It is that when you see that something is false, um, one automatically disengages, not by any conscious effort, but just because it's false and the second that it's noted to be false and one deeply seeks truth, then the disengagement happens all by itself. So everything happens by itself. Anything that you must do by volition and an intentional effort and interference um, is, is false. So you don't call the work that you're doing on yourself effort? Like no, you ask no, yourself, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's, it's sort of, it's sort of like moving through a jungle. Um, and you're not trying to build anything. You're simply looking at the jungle. You're simply trying to figure out, um, how the jungle is arranged and, um, if these trees are real or not. And if you pass your hand through the trunk, does your hand pass through or does it get caught in the trunk? So it really is an examination and exploration, which is completely and utterly not prescript- prescriptive. 
It is not a conscious observing or an intentional, I will watch my thoughts. All those things are a complete moving towards prescription and moving away from truth. So absolutely not. I would not call it effort. I would not call it practice by any means. 